Can I use his 45 seconds? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Oh, <laughs> okay. Is a quick handout. I am Albert DeMille. I've been before this committee many times. I'm a retired CPA, former corporate tax director of Bath Ironworks. And that uh, a little history here. In 1986, Bath Ironworks was sold. It became an entity onto itself. <laughs> uh, that's when I went to Bath Ironworks as its chief tax officer, and I was there through 1994. And I, I, what a difference 25 years makes. We had all the same competitive disadvantages with Ingalls back then. Yet, we got no tax breaks, no tax breaks from the city, no tax breaks from the state. And then, after 1994, the state gave a huge tax break, eliminating property taxes. Millions of dollars of property taxes disappeared on personal property. Then this agreement came in. I was out of state at Raytheon at the time, and I, I, I was years when I heard this $60 million giveaway to Bath Ironworks. Nothing has changed. We have, they still have the same disadvantage then, but apparently now the state's going to pay for all those disadvantages and fund all these things. There are major problems with this bill, and in three minutes I can't go through it. But basically, overall, this is bad tax policy. You do not pass a tax bill for one taxpayer. That's just wrong. Why do they get the tax break in, in uh, Walmart? Why doesn't Walmart get a tax break? They have more employees in Maine than Bath Ironworks. Oh, they don't get paid as much. You know, it's just bad. And, and there are several issues here in terms of they are triple dipping. They are going to get this credit. They got the pine tree zone. I never knew they were getting that, but I heard at Opega they were getting that. And they're getting the main capital investment credit, and they're getting more than they should because, as I've told this committee, there's a drafting error, and they're getting millions of dollars in error. Let's get to what's happening here. Bath Iron Works does not file a main tax return, corporate tax return. General Dynamics files as a consolidated group. Bath Iron Works is from 5 to 7% of the company. The corporate taxes are on the consolidated group, and it's allocated to, so the main taxes are paid by General Dynamics. General Dynamics, and so in terms of this bill, if I was going to do anything, first off, an individual said, it's true, 20 years is crazy. I would cut this back down to five years, and also, it should be adjusted so that the credit you get should not be more than 20% of the corporate income tax. What that does is the current rate is 8.93. If you cut out 1%, it gets it down to about 7.1%. That's what you do, and it should never be refundable. That's absurd. You pay it, that, that if they're paying no corporate income tax, there's a major problem with what they're doing in the state of Maine. And finally, there needs to be a mechanism where you audit this. And I mean, they have to, uh, it, it may be true. They may not be making any money. If that's true, they should be able to prove that. And that is not the Opega way, which is a joke. They do not audit any of these credits. And to do that, you need an outside auditor to come in and look at the numbers or a state audit. And don't say this is impossible. In the 1990s, around 1991, Need to summarize. Yeah, we're having major problems with the unions. And the unions said, we said, we can't give you a raise because we're not making money. They hired it outside accountants. They came in, they audited it, and they went away because we were telling the truth. You can do that. This credit needs to be audited, and you have to prove that this really is needed. And if they can prove that, then under this guidelines, five years and a limit, it would make sense. But they have to prove they need the credit to be to survive, as what, is what they're saying. Okay, any questions from the committee? Representative Pooley. Uh, thank you, Mr. DeMillo, for your testimony. So just so that I'm clear, are, would, would you be more in the neither for nor against camp? It sounds like well, you well, may be for this. If well, well it, it, I've adjusted so much that it, it's nothing near what they are proposing. It's nothing close to what they're proposing because 20 years is now five. It's limited, very much limited. Basically, what I'm saying is if, if general dynamics, which I would think would be paying a substantial corporate income tax, then they take a credit and they still be paying tax. If they're paying very little corporate tax, absolutely I'm against this credit. They gotta be getting something from the state, to the state of Maine. So it's very different than their proposal. And it has to be audited, and we do not audit any credits in this state. There is no mechanism anywhere where we audit credits to see if they really are justified and really effective. Representative Tipping. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to make a statement. I'm trying to discourage other people from doing that. Um, why, <laughs> uh, why go the route of the 20% of the corporate tax instead of having uh, an actual dollar cap? On the amount of the well, I mean, what I'm saying is if their corporate tax is $15 million, 20% of that gets you the three, and they can take the whole three million. They can take a credit. What I'm trying to do is not to give them a credit that wipes out their corporate tax and basically gives them the ridiculously low tax rate or a refund, which is what they have suggested. So why I'm limiting that is if they are a good taxpayer and, and their tax bill is $20 million or $15 million before credits, then giving them a $3 million credit is not that big of a deal. But if they're paying $3 million a year in taxes and you give them a $3 million credit, we're getting nothing from them. And that is just absurd that uh, they would be paying no corporate income taxes in the state of Maine. And it's a private, you know, it's a public company. That information isn't out there. You can go to their audited financial statements. And state income taxes aren't even on the financial statement because state income taxes are what are called allowable cost. They get to charge the government for state income taxes in their contracts. That's another mechanism you should know that some of this actually hurts them if they're on their cost plus contracts, they actually make more money if there's a higher tax. But that's not a big piece of their business. Most of their business is fixed price. Uh, just a follow-up yep. question. Uh, so what is the virtue of that versus what the credit was set up as, as a, a payroll withholding? The payroll, that was the last one. Yeah. The payroll withholding had nothing to do with anything related to corporate income taxes because they could have been paying no corporate income tax and this was just, this was just a refund of operating costs, really. This, as the way they've got it now, it is a credit against the corporate income tax, but they've said, if, so if their corporate income tax is $1 million and we give them a $3 million credit, we actually have to give them back $2 million. So we'll give them $2 million back. So we're really giving someone else's corporate income taxes back to them. Okay, thank you very which much. doesn't make any sense to me. Representative Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I don't know whether you prepared your thoughts and your testimony before the enactment of the um, uh, new federal tax law, but how how does how, how is that new law uh, going to be affected affecting uh, General Dynamics? Well, they they're going to save about five hundred million dollars a year in corporate mm -hmm. in federal mm -hmm. income tax. So, no, she said General that BIW doesn't pay federal income tax on their own. There, it, it's a consolidated return. They're not an independent company by any means. They're, they're no different than Walmart. They're, you know, you know, Walmart pays corporate income tax in Maine, but they're not a Maine corporation. I don't consider BIW a Maine corporation. It is an out-of-state corporation. General Dynamics is the corporation, and we're a very small piece. So our BIW is 5 to 7 percent of the group. Any further questions from the committee? Senator Cushing. You, you had a question? No. Oh, sorry. Hi, Mr. DeMillo. Thank you for being here. When you say they're not a main corporation, they are registered as a main no, corporation, I, I'm, correct? What I call a main corporation to me is someone whose main operations is basically in the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. General Dynamics is the, is the taxpayer in the state of Maine. Okay. And General Dynamics has a presence in Maine that's probably 5 to 7 percent of its total presence in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Which probably reflects on a vast majority of the corporations that the big corporations, that do but you, you, it's not like an LL Bean that's basically a main company. But beyond that, that issue, I just wanted to, to clarify an understanding of what your thought process was here. When you talk about a five-year process, you indicated you had worked for Bath Iron Works in their tax division for seven years. I was the chief tax officer from the initial. They, they sold off in 1986, was one of these leveraged buyout sell-offs, all the companies. I worked for the company that owned, Congolium owned Bath Iron Works and four other companies. They all got sold off. I went to Bath was then by themselves, and I went to Bath Iron Works as there. They never had, they didn't have their own individual tax department. We f handled it out of Congolium until Thank I you. went to okay. Bath. It, so in the course of that, you probably are familiar with the time frame to, to 
receive bids on some of these ships and yep. to actually build them out. What was the approximate time frame to to bid and, and complete work on a Yeah, uh, ships, you know, they, some of those contracts are five years out. And that's sort of where this thing doesn't even start until 2020. So five years gets you out to 2024. They already have a backlog that should have been bid years ago and up until even this year. And included in those costs should be state income taxes. State income tax is what's called an allowable cost. It's in the contracts and you have to put, and usually it's like a five year out. I did it at Raytheon, set another defense contract, you know, and we had to have five years out constantly of our state income tax projections. So every year you get new, you'd have new projections you'd have to do. So that's why I sort of use five years that's what they'd be bidding now. Today, if they bid on a contract, it's work that's going to probably go from 2020 through 2024. Okay. So it's really seven years out because this thing is not supposed to start until 2020. So it's really seven years out. And it, one concluding point, if I may, Mr. Chair. So when we're talking about the, the time frame that you <coughs> just laid out for this, I, I'm having a hard time understanding if some of these ships are going to require adaptations of their facilities and investments in order to do that, why you would choose a five-year time frame on something that could be a seven to ten-year period before they're actually able to make those investments? Well, it, this is the time. Right now, the issue is, okay, we, they want a credit. And my bigger point is, I'm not convinced that they need the credit. That $3 million credit after tax effect and some other issues is about $2 million a year. And is $2 million a year spread over a bunch of ships going to be that big of an issue? I can tell you in 1986 through 1994, we had a lot of issues and we had, we had to cut it very close, but we didn't have any of these incentives. Oh, plus we paid extra property taxes because the city has over assessed us and we had to fight those. So we had a lot of issues and we were cost you have to worry about costs, but you don't bid to lose money. Let me tell you that. You're not going to bid to lose money because General Dynamics is not going to let them do that. So, yes, is, is, is $3 million spread over three ships a million dollars a piece? Is that a major on a, you know, a billion dollar contract? I don't know. I, I don't think it's that significant. But, again, if you have a true audit, if you're going to give them this credit, they can't just sit there and Mr. Fitzgerald is the lawyer. He doesn't know any numbers, apparently. Yeah, why isn't the financial person here? Or why isn't the tax person from uh, probably General Dynamics, because there isn't a tax person, I believe, at Bath anymore, here to explain their tax situation? Because it's easier to muddy the water and not tell the facts. So it may be true. It may be true. They may need this, but they should be able to prove that. But that's the case with every credit we give in this state. You should be able to prove of the pine tree zones that you really hired those people because of those credits. And we don't do that, and OPEGAR did nothing on that. They didn't convince, they said we really couldn't figure it out, or they didn't do enough work on it. So if you're going to pass this credit, they should be able to sit down with either, either they're going to have to hire an outside accountant or a state auditor and show the numbers. And you say, well, we can't show you your numbers. It's, that's why it's private. I'm not asking them publicly to come forward and say, here's our contract bid, and we're only going to make a million dollars on this ship, so that's why we need that million dollar credit. They should be able to prove it. And you know, they should be able to prove that to the state. If you're going to give them $60 million or <coughs> $15 million in my example, you know, and that doesn't mean if they prove that f three years from now, maybe you give them another five years. Why are we giving them 20 years already out in the future? And, and it, it, actually, one of the things it looks like you could actually have no employees and still get a 50% credit. Because it just says less than 4,000 employees, you get a 50% credit. So if you have a really bad, it's never going to go to zero, but you go from 5,000 down to 2,000 employees, you still get a big credit. You know, that, that's the other problem. Why are we giving this huge credit for just keeping the employees, which is much lower than we had historically? 8,000 or 12,000, there were 12,000 employees when I was there in the late 80s, and it went down to about 8,500 in 1994. So it's been constantly down, and now it's around that 5,500. So why are we giving credits for no new jobs? Well, we've got to keep the jobs. Well, that's the same. Every company in the state of Maine can argue, give me a credit, because I'm keeping people employed. What makes Bath Ironworks different than one of these other companies? 
I guess I'd hazard to say that they have a very narrow customer base, which is dependent upon the and, 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 and that's the other problem is, if you listen to Susan Collins and when she got reelected, we get contracts just because of her. It's got nothing to do with costs. We, it, there's a lot of politics involved in getting those ships. So you could cut their costs $100 million and you still might not get the ship because Mississippi has a better delegation that year. It's politics. So it's a very difficult business.